And earlier this year, we just uh, sold to Appfolio, and mm -hmm. which is where I am building out the product, scaling it, and uh, adapting the product to their client base. Got it. Mind if I ask how much did you guys sell it for? Well, it's public uh, for people who want to, to know. Mind if I do yeah. my research and put on my video? <laughs> <laughs> I guess I guess I can just tell you because you're going to put it on anyways. <laughs> uh, we, we sold for 60 million. Before we continue this video, I just want to say thank you, Brilliant, for sponsoring this video. Everyday Brilliant publishes daily challenges on many STEM topics like math, science, and computer science. This site is extremely sleek and they have over 60 interactive courses, which makes learning these concepts way easier because of the hands-on approach. They also have a artificial neural networks course, which is really, really well made. And I think if you're very interested in ML, you should definitely check it out. This is a great compliment to university because you can do practice questions under well curated sequences of problems, which allows you to master the topic you want to master. You know, I wish I had Brilliant when I was in college because I'm more of a hands-on kind of guy. I learn by practicing. And if I had Brilliant, I think I would have understood these concepts a lot faster. So if you're interested, you can go on brilliant.org slash Joma, and then the first 200 people will get 20% off. All right, that's it. All right, welcome back. Thank you, thank you. Thanks for having me back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks for coming. David Ma, my brother. Cool. Yes. I think I'm your first uh, interviewer that came back for a second round. Am I, am I right? I think yeah. you are actually. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Because uh, you were high in demand, so I had to bring you back. Yeah. Cool. So just a little context. In the, the previous video, I made an interview with you, and it's mostly about how you were a quant at Two Sigma. And then in that video, you told me that you quit your job to, do, to co-found a startup. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yep. So a lot of people were wondering, why did you make the switch? Uh, the switch, there was a lot of small reasons. Um, I wanted to try something new, uh, wanting to see what was out there for uh, deep learning. I wanted to also look at cryptocurrencies. I wanted to look at biotech. Uh, but in the end, uh, Elliot, the co-founder of Dynasty, uh, reached out to me like a week after uh, I said I was going to quit. And he was like, hey, have you ever thought about quitting? And I was like, dude, I quit like one week ago. Like, how do you, how did you, how did you do this? Mm. Uh, and then, and then he said like, yeah, just come out to, to LA and then uh, see what we're doing. And then uh, there's nothing, no harm done, right? Yeah. And then one thing led to the next and you know, here I am now. Nice, nice. Yeah. So between back then when I interviewed you to now, any updates on the startup is Dynasty, right? Yeah, there was a lot, a lot of a lot, a lot happened since uh, since the last time we we spoke. Mm. Um, I joined Dynasty at that time. We had just pivoted into um, the the AI for for real estate uh, business, and during that time, uh, we built the product, found product market fit, um, and. Earlier this year, we just uh, sold to Appfolio, and mm. which is where I am building out the product, scaling it, and uh, adapting the product to their client base. Got it. Mind if I ask how much did you guys sell it for? Well, it's public uh, for people who want to, to know. Mind if I do yeah. my research and put on my video? <laughs> <laughs> I, guess, I guess I can just tell you because you're going to put it on anyways. Uh, we, we sold for 60 million. Mm. Yeah. Nice. How many co-founders are you guys? So Dynasty was initially uh, a different business, mm. which did not succeed. Uh, and that's very, that's very common for um, a lot of startups. Uh, so we, at the end of the last business, everything was, we were like 10 people. Uh, and I joined as like the sixth person. Um, and at, at that time, things were not going well. The, there was no product market fit. And we started pivoting into the AI for real estate and uh, about half the people left. Oh. So in terms of co-founder, originally there were two co-founders and then uh, this new, well, for the new pivot, uh, five of us were left. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just a TLDR, what was the previous product and what mm -hmm. is the product now? Just yeah. to make it more clear. Um, back then we wanted to create, we wanted to securitize uh, real estate assets. Um, basically create a, an exchange and then allowing people with 
a smaller amount of capital to uh, take, in, take positions in uh, real estate assets. If you think about it right now, if to buy a house, you have to have, you know, especially in uh, Silicon Valley, you have to have like 200K, 300K just to put, it, put down a, a deposit. It's not very democratic, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and also your, all your money is into it, like this one single asset that's very susceptible to, um, to local changes. Uh, so we wanted to change that. It didn't really work out. Uh, we, at least we didn't find how to make it work. Uh, I'm not going to say it's a bad idea because we still think that, you know, there are benefits to this world we're dreaming of. Um, but in the process, Elliot and other uh, people who joined before me found out that a lot of real estate participants had a lot of trouble managing their assets. So it's unlike stocks, real estate is, a, is an asset that you have to, you know, it's a real thing. You have to... There's um, upkeep. Yeah, yeah, there's upkeep. You want to like get people in to, for rentals and stuff like that. I think half of the, the income comes from uh, rentals, right? Mm. If you take the other half as appreciation. So one of the big challenges was the operations of leasing uh, a building or leasing a, a, your assets. So we decided, well, everybody says it's a problem, so let's do something about it. And let's solve it. <laughs> yeah, and that, that's where uh, Lisa came in. Lisa is the second iteration of Dynasty. So that's like the pivot, that's your new business. Okay. That's right, yeah. And of, of course, Lisa is an AI for leasing, mm. uh, the, the, the pun. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering, now that you've you know, dig your hands deep into ML, are there any misconceptions about ML engineering that you want to debunk? I think the, the general uh, excitement about ML is great. It made a lot of people go into ML that, and that's uh, awesome. But like a lot of focus has been on uh, how do I build models and how do I uh, fit, uh, fit a model to, to the data. But like very little focus has been uh, on how do I generate data? How do I design a, a business process that will create data for the algorithm that I want to build? How do I handle the outputs? How do I build all the process around uh, the ML components? Yeah, there's too much focus on building the models, uh, not enough focus on how to integrate uh, ML into existing uh, products. And to be fair, it's kind of a, a new field, right? Um, not many people have to know how to do this because it's, it's, it's so new. Uh, like an analogy is when you know, computers were, were first invented or like the internet was first invented, pe people were finding out how to integrate that into existing business processes. And you know, it took a lot of trial and error, but that's the same thing. Like not everything is just building models. Right. Yeah. Not everything becomes more useful if there's machine learning in it. Yeah. Right. Maybe not everything should use blockchain technology. Exactly. <laughs> right. That's what. That's the example I want to use. Like I always wondered. A lot of people want to do machine learning now. Mm -hmm. My viewers especially, yeah. because I think it's because I'm in the intersection of data science and software engineering. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't. I don't really understand the appeal of machine learning at the job. Because in my mind, what you do is like you said. Mm -hmm. You make sure you have good data make sure you, you solve a problem with your ML. So most of the time in my head, you build data pipelines to funnel it into your model. You pick a model, you play with the, you tune the parameters mm -hmm. yeah. and then try to optimize for that AUC. And then that's it. <laughs> like is, or is there more to it that I don't know that is fun? I, I think like you're, you're kind of right. I mean, especially if you're building products, you're not, you don't have the time to do the fun stuff in, in ML research. Mm -hmm. right? The way I see it, software engineering is the, the core skill. Mm -hmm. And then there's like ML engineering that, that gives you a bit more uh, domain knowledge into how to build ML products <coughs> or ML models. But in the end, once, you, once you've done that, like a V1 of it, that's it. You have to, you have to build all of the systems around it. Uh, and that's not what the school, um, it's not what you really learn at school. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. So imagine the fun stuff that machine mm -hmm. learning researchers do. What is that? What is the fun stuff? What would be fun for me, I think, uh, in terms of research would be 
you know, investigating the latest uh, algorithms and like uh, understanding why they work, why they don't, trying different set data sets on um, these new algorithms. A lot of the things that you've seen out there, like GANs, like generative adversarial networks, you make like funky images, uh, style transfers, like these were all investigations in why do convolutional networks work as they do. Um, and that's research, right? And that's not, it's not primarily, those, those things were not built primarily for a business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, got it. And of, of course, Lisa is an AI for leasing, mm. uh, the, the, the pun. <laughs> uh, one of the problems that people had was like, when you put your, uh, your, your apartment for, uh, on Zillow or something like that, you get a ton of inbound. You have, um, you have emails, you have text messages, you have phone calls, like, it's, the, it's very uh, fragmented, the, the things that you get. And you have to take all of that inbound, coordinate showings, take care of applications, and like, do all that move-in process. Uh, so Lisa, what we decided to do was to automate the, the responses uh, uh, to text messages, emails, phone calls, and on the other side, we just produced showings. Like people just had to show up, and or at least the leasing agents just had to show, to show up and uh, sell the, sell the the property. They didn't have to like coordinate and do all that stuff. Mm. Uh, and that was the main the main focus. Uh, I think a lot of people liked how you know their phones stopped ringing uh, after they used they started using Elisa. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. Cool. Awesome. So, what about you? What did you do? Mm -hmm. in Dynasty. Yeah. You worked on Lisa, I guess? Yeah, of course. Okay. Uh, so originally I was hired for, to do some research because, you know, I was a researcher, blah, blah, blah. Um, but, you know, nothing turns out as we plan it. And I decided to take that opportunity to uh, dive into ML. Uh, I, I mean, I had some ML experiences uh, back in college and a little bit uh, back in my previous job, but never uh, deeply. So I decided to build out the, the ML components, uh, got into deep learning, learn about uh, NLP, which is natural language processing. And once that core thing was built, uh, you know, we were still a startup, we just had to do other things. So I uh, got myself into software engineering. Um, you know, before that I had never done like real software engineering, mm. but under uh, you know, our CTO, uh, I was able to learn a lot about um, you know, how, to build, uh, how to build products and like, yeah, so I did software engineering and uh, product design. Yeah. Nice. Basically cool. you have to do everything at a startup. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So why, why couldn't other people just do the same thing, just apply AI to real estate stuff and then would they be a competitor? Like how, why, what made Dynasty successful? Mm -hmm. We also thought that there was going to be competitors, and I think there there are, mm -hmm. but nobody took the similar, the exact approach that we did, uh, which was Lisa would talk to to prospects, prospects being the people who would rent. Uh, they would talk to them without telling them that they it's a bot or anything, mm -hmm. because in reality we're not fully a bot either. Mm -hmm. um, about 40% of our messages are handled by humans, who, who we call operators. The fact that we try to give such a natural um, experience to prospect is something that um, the clients really liked because in general, um, people don't like to interact with a bot. Um, so our conversations look very natural uh, because there's a lot of humans that kind of, uh, that we fall back to when things go wrong. Mm. Actually, I have, a, I have a funny story about people not liking to interact with bots. So, one, one thing that we measured um, was how often would people uh, reply when we send messages back to them, right? Mm. It's like reply ratio, whatever. <clears throat> Initially, we would reply instantaneously because uh, people would message in and we were like, hey, we have a showing at 2.30, uh, do you want to come? Like within seconds. And then, the, and then people were probably freaked out and replied less than if we were to wait two minutes mm. uh, before replying. So although we can reply very quickly, sometimes we wait 
uh, a minute or two before doing so. Oh, that's and, interesting. So another part that made us successful, I think, uh, was the fact, well, I think the, the, biggest, the, the biggest success was the, the, the market validation that was done prior to the pivot. But that aside, uh, another thing was our willingness to just build what was, what was needed and like not focus on uh, technology too much and just get something out, out there, re, uh, get it in front of people, iterate, and build it as simply as possible so that we don't waste too much energy trying to optimize a system that was not going to exist like a week later. Mm. You know? And also these days, AI products are like very, uh, are very hot. Um, a lot of people spend a lot of time optimizing that small, uh, small component, which in retrospect, like I could have spent more time on that. But if I did that, I wouldn't have like used my time to build out the product in terms of the software engineering part, mm -hmm. right? Deciding to say, okay, that's good enough and work on uh, like the most important part for the business. Uh, was was something was a was spirit that like everybody had uh, at Dynasty, and I think that really mm -hmm. um, yeah. you know pushed us mm -hmm. uh, beyond the edge. Can you give me a concrete example of that thing you just described? Like, what could have you optimized on? Mm -hmm. Like, how did your ML system work as a whole? What was that part of the ML system that you could have optimized on? But what did you work on instead to make mm -hmm. your product better? In the back end, the, the first ML component that we, we created was um, uh, an intent classifier. So we would take in messages and uh, understand what was the intent, classify them as uh, uh, one of a few intents, like do they want a showing, um, did they accept something, like whatever. Um, oh, actually, before we continue, can I just... Um kind of have a high level overview of what Lisa does because right now I think it's kind of just like a chat bot for mm -hmm. leasing yeah and then is there anything that it does like how does it interact with the um, the operators and mm -hmm. also the clients right so Lisa is a pretty complicated product mm -hmm. in terms of how you would explain it like with the components that you understand because there's a lot of interactions one interaction is with the prospect uh, so with through there we it's just a bunch of texts or emails. The first text comes in. We ask them, uh, do they want a showing? Then the 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 conversation can go anywhere. They can ask questions about the property. They can like uh, you know decide not to do anything. We have to confirm them for the showing and like we ask them how how it's going. That's one interaction with the agents, the leasing agents. Uh, we schedule things on their calendar. Uh, we ask them questions that, that we don't know the answer of. We answer questions that they, they have for us. And then there's like an interaction with bosses. Well, which bosses? The bosses. The real estate agent boss? Correct. Okay. Uh, sometimes the same person, but like often it's not. Mm. Uh, they want reporting. Uh, so that's, uh, that's the main interaction. And then there's our human operators, which uh, uses Lisa as like an interface to the outside world. They have uh, what we call the command center, and it's mostly like a, a messenger interface, but like augmented with a lot of information. And also, uh, they have a, a concept called the quick action, which they can quickly find a, a commonly used action to reply to prospects. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So that means back then real estate agent would have to communicate with the prospects, do the showing, schedule their own showing, manage their own calendar. But now they actually don't even need to talk to the prospects and you just have Lisa that is kind of like a layer in between that's right. them. Oh, yeah. that's really cool. Until they get to the showing, which, right. you, know, you know, they want to use their human specialty to do the sale. You know? Well, I mean, one day you could build robots and just replace that too. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> one day, one day. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So now that we have a good overview, let's go back to um, what are the ML parts that are very specific? I'm pretty sure there's ML in the quick reply. There's probably ML in trying to classify what messages there are. So what were the other stuff that you could, that you worked on that was better for the business than just optimizing the mm -hmm. ML stuff? Mm -hmm. Once we got 
the, the intent classifiers, we could have you know, tried better models like BERT or ELMO, like the, the stuff that came out in 2008 and was really hot. We could have tried using that to you know, gain a few percentage points of accuracy. Are those models uh, like NLP models? That's right. Okay. Yeah. We used something like pretty simple, like a, a tech CNN um, for our, our core models and it worked, it worked fine. Uh, but like, you know, sure, could we have done better? Uh, we're still trying uh, so when we have time, but like there are more important parts uh, to work on. Got it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like the, what? Like the question tagger was born out of necessity and like they were, they were answering the questions over and over again. Uh, so like finding other places to, to, to package an ML solution is more impactful than trying to optimize the existing components. Got it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what do you think most startups make as mistakes using ML? Like what are the common mistakes startups make using ML? Because mm -hmm. I'm guessing you're comparing your yeah. dynasty to other startups. Yeah. So how would they do, what would they do wrong? My guess would be focusing too much on the latest uh, technology that's out there, especially the ac academic um, literature, and trying to apply that to, to their business. It takes time to, for academic literature to mature for business, and a lot of, uh, a lot of the literature is sometimes not reproducible, mm. and it's a common problem. Uh, so like, investing too much there uh, will waste a lot of time, and as a startup, you don't have a lot of time. Got it. Yeah. I heard a lot of people saying that, in theory, the paper sounds great and it works mm -hmm. with their data set, but applying it yeah. is a whole different story. Yeah, applying, you have to, so finding a way to apply ML to a business environment is difficult because you have to specifically know which problem, like business in, in itself is like many, many problems. And you have to carve out one specific uh, problem for ML it has to be worth it, worth the time of research. You have to be able to find a process that will generate data for that problem. And once your algorithm is working, you have false positives, you have false negatives, you have to have a process to handle that. And then not even including uh, monitoring, like making sure that uh, your, your models are, are always uh, performing as well as you think they are. In our business with Lisa, it's generally pretty it's not too bad because like English generally doesn't change, uh, but you know maybe if you're working on ads or like uh, trading, your environment will change and your, your algorithm performance might, might decay, and you you have to like know about that. Mm -hmm. you know? so there's a lot of stuff that happens mm -hmm. around that you know, small ML component. Mm -hmm. So, from what I understand, it seems like it's better to build out your system, understanding what you have to do, how to do everything, and then identify what are the spots that need ML and then solve for that, rather than some other companies would identify maybe even an ML problem and then yeah. build out a solution mm -hmm. like everything else, which ultimately maybe that solution wasn't even that useful for the market anyways, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. So, oh, do you want to yeah, say something? Yeah, I think, I think another... Uh, pitfall would be trying to solve too much with ML. Oh, right, uh, right. Like there was a, you know, there's a few um, companies out there that wanted to uh, build personal assistants. And it turns out the job of personal assistant is like extremely difficult. And mm -hmm. there's like infinite var variation, exactly. right? Even in our business of leasing, we found uh, that it's very subtle. Mm. Taking the, the very simple example of what's the rent, you know, you think that's a, a, a simple answer, uh, it's a simple question at first, but mm -hmm. then you have to say, you think, okay, well, actually, what, are they talking about the one bedroom or two bedroom? Are they talking about moving now or moving later? Are they talking about uh, a one, one, one year lease or a two year lease? Oh, wait, are we talking about the, like, about all our, our, our properties or like only the ones that are available. Yeah, there's a lot of intricacies, uh, intricacies in, uh, in a simple question just as like, what is the rent? Mm -hmm. yeah. And I also know it's quite difficult because I'm trying to hire a 
real personal assistant mm -hmm. and that is still very hard so i'm guessing yeah. you know because if you can't even solve my problems with a real human i don't even know how to start solving with a with an like machine learning model because usually i think if something is easy to solve manually like a rep a lot of repetition then you can kind of replace it with ai mm -hmm. but yeah yes that's actually one of the guidelines that we have mm. if we want to carve out something for the for ml first solve it with humans see how it works see how it works mm -hmm. if it's really repetitive and like people make don't make a lot of mistakes write some heuristics mm. uh, not even ml and run run with it for a while handle your handle your false positives handle your false negatives and then if the system is humming then you know try to increase the the, the accuracy with uh, with ml mm. but without these intermediate steps like don't even think about it mm -hmm. all right so dynasty are you guys um are you guys hiring you know yes yeah we're definitely hiring uh <laughs> right now you know we need a lot of uh good engineers um the the way we we want to hire is hiring people who have a uh, decent software engineering experience because we don't currently have a lot of time to to bring people up to to speed uh, because we're still a startup even though we're acquired and we want general software engineering skills we think that that will translate well into the ml parts or uh, if you focus on uh, you know more system res reliability or like uh, more product uh, but like the core software engineering skill is what we're looking for okay yeah. what kind of technologies would they be working with if they want to be an applied machine learning engineer, we 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 uh, we use like typical stuff like TensorFlow, uh, you know, the Python packages and stuff like that. Um, our stack uh, on the back end is Java. Again, our pragmatism. We don't we don't try to use too many fancy uh, latest technologies. We just use what is tried and proven. Uh, so really, that's kind of our core philosophy. Is. Mm -hmm. Right. So what would make a good machine learning engineer, a good hire for you? What kind of skills or mm -hmm. not just skills, but um, attributes, personal attributes? Yeah. Uh, willing to dig into the details, understanding the business, uh, not like focusing too much on, on the ML part, um, being good at uh, software engineering in general. At Dynasty, we're not like ML engineers are not are not like, oh, I'm the ML guy and then you can you guys can do like the, the back end. Like you have to do you have to do the software engineering. You don't get like an assistant for that. Right? Mm. Yeah. So what's next for you and Dynasty in the next five years? Mm -hmm. Well five years is a long time. I mean uh, just a year and a half ago uh, it was a different business. <laughs> yeah. No, two year, yeah two years ago Dynasty was a different thing. Um, Definitely for me, uh, I want to see Lisa built out to its full potential. Uh, hopefully, you know, the viewers will, will someday uh, rent an apartment and be talking to Lisa. Um, and after that, who knows? Uh, I think I'll be at Appfolio for the uh, foreseeable future. Nice, yeah. cool. We'll, uh, maybe I'll be building other ML products, hopefully, uh, finding other ways to apply ML into the real world. Mm -hmm. Awesome, cool. Yeah, thank you so much. And I just want to say best of luck to Lisa, mm -hmm. Dynasty, and Appfolio. Mm -hmm. um, if they do want to apply to Dynasty, do they have to do it through Appfolio website or is there a separate Dynasty website? Uh, we are fully under Appfolio now. Uh, okay. So you should apply to Appfolio. Exactly. Yeah. So, and then if you want to prepare for Appfolio, don't forget to check out Tech Interview Pro. Uh, yeah, check out Tech Interview Pro if you're interested in getting ready for interviews. Oh yeah, I also want to plug my Twitter, M A David J. M A David J. Shit posts. Cool. All right. Thank you so much for being here. Really mm -hmm. appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Thank you for having me. All right. Yeah.